Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell, and I could not be more excited to continue sharing with you guys personal finance topics that I think could be useful for you in your long-term financial journey. Well, let me just say this. 300 episodes is a lot of episodes, right? And through all of this, I'm trying to teach you guys about your personal finances. I'm trying to teach you things that either you didn't know or things that maybe you didn't have down or things that you needed motivation for. And I'm trying to get you to act. I'm trying to get you to do something about it. Do something about your financial situation and to maximize what you can do. Uh, Control what you can control and leave the rest uh, up to the markets or whatever else, right? Um, But Today, I want to just break down, as I have before, right, the financial action plan, the plan that I have uh, set forth for you guys as to how I think you should manage your money uh, on a day-to-day, month-by-month, year-by-year basis, right? The process that I think you should go through because I think we all need a reminder. We all need a reminder uh, of what it looks like to manage your money properly, what a good working plan looks like, uh, and how that can help you over a long period of time. So if you uh, need a good financial plan to help you to walk through your financial life, then stick around for all that and more in today's episode. Before we get started though, if you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan. And that's really good supplemental materials to these long form episodes I'm putting out on the podcast and uh, on YouTube every single day. And then if you need somebody to help you to uh, build a financial plan to uh, create a plan for your long-term financial good, then I can help you do that. Just uh, DM me on any of the major social media sites and tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions. And you and I can begin working together, pushing towards your long-term financial goals and ultimately pushing you on towards long-term financial freedom, which is what I hope for every single individual watching or listening to this show on a day-to-day basis. Now, ultimately, sometimes we need a refresher. And those of you who have watched or listened to this show for any period of time know uh, my process. You know what this financial action plan looks like. You know the plan that I think you should follow in order to reach uh, your long-term financial goals. You know what this is, right? But maybe you need a little refresher. You need a little better understanding of uh, the way in which you should go about doing things. But if you haven't been listening to this show, haven't been watching the show, this is new to you, right? I want to offer you uh, this plan. I want to offer you uh, this process of doing things. Uh, and none of these are rocket science. None of this is crazy. Uh, but what it is, is it is uh, structure. It gives structure to your financial life. It gets structure to your ability uh, to build wealth over the long term and structure to your ability uh, to maintain the money that you have over a long period of time. Okay, So um, there are a lot of little parts to all of these larger parts of the financial action plan. And I'm not going to dig into all of those because I've done many, many episodes that does dig into uh, many of these different areas. But what I want to go over is just these big um, things that you need to do, why you need to do them, uh, why they're so vital to your financial life, and how you can get through them uh, even when some of these may seem particularly insurmountable for you in your life right now. So let's just jump right into what the financial action plan looks like. So we'll start with the first part. The first part is you need to create a unique monthly budget every single month on the month period. You need to create a unique monthly budget. Okay. Now, those of you who've heard, you, we've all heard the word budget. We know what a budget is, right? But those of you who may hear budget and go, well, you know, this isn't going to help me. I promise it will. Okay, but you have to take it seriously. This has to be a serious part of your financial action plan. It has to be a serious part of your financial life all the way through, right? Your budget needs to be your income at the top, right? And then all other expenses that fall below, right? Uh, It needs to be everything, your giving, your investing. It needs to be your insurances. It needs to be everything that you are going to spend money on in that month needs to go there. If somebody's got a birthday and you're buying them a present, it needs to go there. Uh, if it's Christmas time and you're spending money on presents, it needs to go there. If um, you know you know that you're going to have to pay for uh, some subscription, or so, it needs to be there every single month. And you're like, well, I have variable income. How do I do this? Take a conservative estimate of what your income can be any given month, right? As conservative as you can, work through the budget from there, and then any extra money, allocate it to other parts of your budget that you would go to next after um, you make that baseline amount of money, okay? So uh, the budget is so important, and we need to not only write down the budget before the month begins, we need to track our expenses as we go 
And as you track those expenses, uh, you'll find out whether or not you're keeping with your budget and you can make the proper adjustments in order to stay within the bounds of what your budget says. Don't think of a budget as a way to lock yourself down. Don't think of a budget as a way to keep you from doing what you want to do. Think of a budget as a way to give you permission to spend your money uh, in the way that you have chosen to do so within the budget. Okay, so that has to be done first and foremost. And it's not just a one time deal. It's every month. Every month, even once you have money, every month, a budget needs to be a part of your financial life. Then once you have budgeted, right, and once you are budgeting actively, you can go to the second part of the financial action plan. Uh, and again, budgeting can be done in a night, right? Your at least initial budget can be done in a night. You can get that done, okay? So you budget, right? You're working through your financial action plan. You're starting, okay? The second part of the financial action plan can be uh, one month, of household expenses, right? You uh, you need to put away in an emergency fund, in a savings account or high yield money market account, one month of household expenses. And the reason that we do just one month here is because you need a little bit of buffer. You need uh, a little bit of uh, help in case something were to occur. You need a little money set aside here. Many people, they don't have $400 or don't have $1,000 in order to do something um, that, you know, if an emergency came along, they could take care of, right? If, you know, their car broke down and they had to buy a part, they might have to put it on a credit card. They might have to take out debt in order to pay for a new transmission or whatever, right? But we don't want that. We want uh, just the small basic things to be covered if they were to occur in our life, right? And so we set aside one month worth of expenses there. Now, budgeting and doing that shouldn't take way too long, okay? But once we've done that, then we're going to do the following. The third part of the financial action plan, if you have a 401k, a 403b, any other type of employer-sponsored retirement account, right? what I want you to do is I want you to take advantage of the match offered by that particular employer. Now, what do I mean by a match? Okay. Well, what a match is, it is when your employer puts in uh, a certain amount of money to match the amount of money that you put in to a particular account. And here, all I'm trying to do is get you free money, okay? I'm trying to get you as much free money as possible because we haven't really gotten to um, you know, your debt. We haven't gotten to uh, the things that are holding you back from winning financially, right? We have not gotten to this, those things. Yes, we're budgeting. We're tracking our expenses, which is going to help us. It's going to help us to know where our money's going and cut down in certain places and um, you know, add to certain places that are more important, right? But this match, it seems a bit out of place. It seems like we shouldn't be doing this in this particular part or this early in the financial action plan, but we cannot turn down free money. You have to take advantage of the free money that is offered to you. And if you continue to do that over a long period of time, you can build up a nice nest egg. So this is a way you can get started investing here, uh, but you don't have to uh, you know, put up the, the large aggressive amounts that I've talked about uh, before. Just take advantage of the match, invest up to whatever match your employer offers you, and then stop. That's it. Okay, that's all you should be investing at this point. Nothing more, nothing less. Take advantage of the match, get all the free money you can, and then move on to the fourth part of the financial action plan. Right? And doing this, right, taking that match is going to allow you to start growing your money and compounding it towards the future. Okay, and that's going to be extremely useful for you. Uh, and you get to take advantage of an incentive that your employer offers you, which is always a good thing. We want to be taking advantage of any type of incentives or benefits that we can get. Okay, now. Once we do those things, then it gets serious, right? Then it gets kind of tough, honestly, right? The financial action plan uh, in the fourth part uh, is where, you know, you either make it or you break it, right? You either uh, get this done, you do this correctly, or, um, you know, you kind of fall apart in this fourth part because everybody can create a budget and try to start tracking their expenses. Everybody can do that. Everybody uh, can, you know, get a month of expenses and uh, set those aside. Everybody uh, can start putting a little money away in a 401k just up to an employer match, which typically aren't you know huge amounts of money. People can do that, right? 100% people can do that. But what can people not do? Or what do people not think that they can do? Most people do not think that they can get out of debt. Most people do not think 
uh, that they can uh, look at their student loans or their credit cards or uh, their cars or whatever, right? All this debt that they may have hanging around their neck and go, you know what? I can pay all of that off in a reasonably small amount of time, in a reasonably uh, short amount of time. Many people don't think they can do that. Uh, and the truth of the matter is the way you have lived your life up to this point to get into uh, some financial hardship, you probably couldn't have done that. Right, And that's not a knock on you, that's just uh, the truth. The truth is that most individuals, the way they live their financial lives, they're not able to pay off debt in a very fast manner. Right, But paying off debt is not as painful as it seems. Right, uh, Yes, it requires sacrifice. Yes, it requires persistence. Yes, it requires uh, you being serious about getting out of the financial hardship that you are in. Okay, But it also requires you to uh, want to not be normal. Being normal is easy. Anybody can be normal, but to be weird, to be different, to be better than other people, then you need to get out of debt. You need to have cash flow to actually do things because what debt does, I say this all the time on the show, debt strains your cash flow. Debt is a strain on your cash flow. And when your cash flow is strained, you have less money to invest. You have less money to save. You have less money uh, to uh, you know spend on the things you want to spend money on. You have less money uh, to give and be generous with. Right. And we want your money to be maximized in those places. And when you have a lot of debt, of course, it's going to take a long time to pay off the debt that you have because uh, you have a bunch that you have to pay off. Right. Oh, I got to pay off this. But my cash flow is being eaten away by this other debt and all these types of things. So uh, I try to find the, the most efficient way that we can go about paying off these debts. And that is the debt snowball method that you may or may not have heard of before. But uh, I'm going to explain it. All that you're doing here is you need to line up all your debts, not by interest rate, right, but amount. And I want you to line them up from smallest debt to largest debt, okay? And if you have student loans, do the individual student loans. If you have more than one credit card, uh, do the individual credit cards, right? Don't just do broad uh, loans or broad debts that you have, but every individual debt that you have from smallest to largest. Then here's what we're going to do. We're budgeting, right? So we're finding ways that we can uh, squeeze our income to every single amount that we can. And we're cutting out the unnecessary stuff. And we're making sure that we have uh, a little margin. We have some extra money. And if we don't have extra money, then we may really have an income problem. And I'll tell you this. Most people do not have an income problem. Most people have a debt and expenses problem. Okay? And if you do, then we're about to fix your problem. Okay? You find a little extra room in your budget. And here's what you do. You make the minimum payments, just the minimum, on every single debt on that list, every single one. You just make the minimum payment, okay? Credit card, minimum payment. Uh, the, um, you know, the car loan, make your payment, right? Your home, make the payment. Uh, the medical bills, make the minimum payment, right? Make the minimum payment on every single thing. But then, I want you to take any extra money that you have laying around, any extra money that you have, right? And again, we shouldn't be actively saving at this point right? We shouldn't be uh, actively investing at this point because all we're doing is taking the employer match, right? We should have a little extra money laying around. Any extra money you have laying around goes towards that smallest debt. And it goes towards that smallest debt until that smallest debt is paid off. Then once the smallest debt's paid off, you're going to take everything, the minimum amount plus the extra that you were putting on that smaller debt and put it on the next smallest debt, right? Which you're already making a minimum payment on. Okay, and you're going to get that one paid off. And then once you pay that one off, you're going to take the minimum you were paying on that one, the minimum you were paying on the smallest one, and the extra amount that you were putting on those debts, and you're going to roll that into the next one, right? And you can see how this snowballs. The amount gets larger and larger and larger that you're putting on each debt, right? And you get a little momentum. You get happy about the fact that, ooh, I'm paying off debt. I'm actually doing something. I'm being effective with my money. I'm actually doing something effectively. I'm paying off debt effectively. And then ultimately you get towards some of those larger debts and you can knock them out a lot more quickly. Now, ultimately for the average American, this is going to take two to three years, right? So putting your head down to do this for two to three years is very tough, right? And you may say, well, man, I, you know, I'm not investing that much for two or three years or, uh, you know, I'm not saving in any other places for two or three years. But what you're doing is you're freeing up your cash flow month by month, right? You are actively opening up your income to more possibilities month by month. Then you get completely out of debt. Two or three years have passed, you're completely out of debt. Then what you do is you build four to six months up in an emergency fund, right? So you already have one month that should be sitting there. And just FYI, if you use any of that one month, right, then you need to replenish it, okay? So that's something that you need to know along this plan is that 
if you ever take steps backwards, which sometimes is inevitable, right? But if you ever take steps backwards, then just pick back up on that step, get through with that and move on uh, to where you need to be next, right? So for instance, if uh, you need to use that one month of expenses, then uh, you go back, fill up that one month of expenses before you get back to paying off your debt, right? Uh, or let's say you get to a point where you're uh, investing heavily, which I'm going to get to here shortly, right? Uh, and let's say a debt comes along that's just a huge debt, right? You have a huge medical debt or something, right? And it puts you back in debt. Well, maybe that's where you have to go back and uh, you have to pay off your debt and then build up an emergency fund again and then get back to aggressively investing. But we want to take this step by step, not be doing too many things at once because that's where things get foggy for people. Things get foggy for people when they're trying to do 10 different things at once. And if you just focus on one specific thing that you need to be doing at a time, then you can really knock that thing out. It is intentionality and intensity. Being intentional about where you're putting your money, what you're allocating your money towards, and being um, very intense about how you're putting that money to work. Being very serious about this money goes here for a reason, and I'm going to put it here, and it's going to work, and I'm going to will it to work, right? So again, four to six months worth of expenses is what we want in an emergency fund, uh, because let's say you lose a job, right? Four to six months should be enough time that you can find, um, you know, a job with, you know, equivalent or close to equivalent pay that you were making previously. Uh, and it should be enough time that uh, if you have to use that emergency fund, uh, then you didn't have to go into debt and you could keep doing everything else that you were doing. Uh, you just had to you know, cut down your expenses some and make sure uh, that that four to six months may have lasted, right? Um, and then otherwise, all the other emergency things that may occur in your life, that four to six months worth of expenses needs to be able to cover those as well. Okay, so that's our fully funded emergency fund. That is the big emergency fund. And that, again, needs to be in a savings account, high yield savings or money market account. And it needs to just sit there. We're not investing this money. We're only putting it aside. It is our insurance against tragedy. Okay, that's how I think about our emergency fund. Then the sixth part of the financial action plan. This is where it gets fun because now you're completely out of debt. You have some savings. Uh, you're taking advantage of the free money that's offered to you if you have free money offered to you. Now we're going to invest aggressively. Now I need you to invest at least at least 15% of your household income uh, into your future, right? Retirement, your kid's college, uh, any bridge investing you want to do. If you want to uh, buy something in the future that you need to invest for for a while, then this is where you do that and you do that heavily. And you may say, man, 15% of my income, that's a lot of my income. And you're right. 15% of your income is a lot of money. But let me just suggest this. Let me just uh, bring this up. If you were deeply in debt, right? I bet that debt was taking up more than 15% of your income, right? I bet that debt was taking up uh, more than you could ever think to invest, right? Uh, but now you're talking about investing and actually putting it in the asset column. And now you're hesitant, right? Because maybe you don't know too much about investing or you don't know where to put the money. I have a lot of videos on that. I can help you out with that. I can really help you to get on the right foot here. But ultimately what we're doing is putting away a lot of money for our future, being very aggressive in how we invest for our future because we need money to retire on. We need money to live on. We need money uh, to live our dreams. And I want us to live our dreams. But if you do not sacrifice today, if you do not invest today, if you do not put money away into IRAs and 401ks or uh, UTMAs or 529s for your children or um, you know any other type of you know taxable brokerage account or whatever, right? If you're not putting money away Way today, then you're not going to have money tomorrow. You have to sacrifice something today in order to get to something tomorrow, right? Uh, so this again uh, is not surprising. This is, we have to be doing this. We must uh, be doing this in order to be effective over the long run. Then the seventh part of the financial action plan should be done right along with uh, that sixth part of investing aggressively, right? Uh, this is paying off your home early now. I told you to get out of consumer debt earlier. That is not your home, not your mortgage, okay? And if you're renting, keep renting. Don't go and buy a house while you're deeply in debt, okay? Get out of all of the other consumer debt other than your mortgage, and then you're going to pay off your mortgage while you're aggressively investing, right? Because again, we have cash flow now because we're not in debt and we have savings. We have cash flow to invest and we have cash flow to pay off our home, right? And if you can get your home paid off early, just think about that. If you can get your home, which is 
far and away, most people's largest expense month by month is their rent or their mortgage, right? If you can pay off your home, then you can breathe. You have a ton of cash flow to deal with. You have a ton of cash flow to play with, right? You can uh, allow yourself to have a good financial future because um, your financial future is really based on two things, right? And retirement is based on two things. It's based on the amount of money that you have and the amount of money that you use, right? Basically, uh, your income or your nest egg and your expenses, right? And paying off your home is paying off one of your biggest expenses month to month. You get that paid off, right? And then you need less money month to month, or you can use the rest of the money that you would have used on the home to do other fun stuff, right? Uh, But ultimately, paying off your home is extremely valuable. And some people say, never pay off your home, blah, 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 blah. No, you want to own your home. You want to have one, that equity in that property, and two, less expenses so you can have more cash flow. Right, you can have more cash flow month to month when you do not have extra payments. Less payments, more cash flow. Okay, so pay off your home early. Um, if you are getting into a mortgage, uh, get a mortgage that is a 15-year fixed rate mortgage, uh, where the payment is no more than a quarter of your take-home pay every single month. Right, I know that's kind of strict, uh, but in order to get to that place, that means that you will be able to afford your home. You can own a home, and the home not own you. Okay. Now, now we're in the gravy. We've got our home paid off. We're investing aggressively. We have savings. We're out of debt. We're budgeting. We're doing all the good things. We've done all the good things. Okay. Now, the eighth part of the financial action plan is to max out everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything you can that makes the most sense for you. Okay. I'm talking about investing. I'm talking about maxing things out. I'm talking about uh, you know your IRAs. Hit the contribution limits if you can right? Your 401ks, if you can hit those contribution limits, great, right? HSAs, which are triple tax advantage, uh, and that's for uh, qualified uh, health plans, right? Uh, you can put money in those, get a tax break, it grows tax-free, and you can take it out tax-free for qualified medical expenses, or at age 65, you can start using it like a traditional IRA. Um, and so max that out, right? Max out your traditional brokerage. And I know you know traditional brokerage accounts, there, there's no maximum uh, to hit, but I'm just saying put as much in them as you feel necessary, right? Put a lot of money away, be extremely aggressive, because now you have no house payment, you are already investing, you have saved you have no debt. Now everything here is gravy. Everything here is just to live your dreams and to put away as much money as possible for your future. Now, let's be clear because I want to kind of stop right here and elaborate, right? You haven't heard a lot of fun going on here, right? You haven't heard a lot of spending going on here. Now, where do I think it's okay to kind of, you know, ease off the gas? I think it's okay to ease off the gas after you are out of debt right? I do think building up that fully funded emergency fund is extremely important, right? But if you get completely out of debt and then you want to spend money on a vacation, spend money on the dang vacation, right? Don't, don't do anything crazy, but spend money on a vacation. You want to reward yourself after getting out of debt by all means. But then especially once you're investing aggressively for your future, you have that four to six months worth of expenses in an emergency fund, then you can start enjoying your money a whole lot more, right? It takes some time to get back to where you can actually enjoy your money in a real way, right? But once you get back there, oh, it's so great. It's so great because now you actually have money. In the past, when you tried to enjoy your money, you were enjoying uh, your money in the short term, but then over the long term, you would look up and go, oh, well, I have to repay this credit card now and I'm going to owe interest on that or I'm going to have to repay this loan because I didn't have the money to do what I wanted to do in the first place. Now you can actually enjoy your money. And I think you should be enjoying your money all the way through uh, the maxing out everything that I'm talking about here. And then ultimately, you want to really enjoy your money in the ninth and final part of the financial action plan. And that is to give extremely generously, right? At this point, we have money, right? If you're out of debt, you have savings, um, you're investing heavily, your home's paid off, you have money and you have money to give generously. Now, throughout this whole process, right, if you're a Bible-believing Christian like me, I believe that you should still be giving. You should uh, still be giving your tithe. You should be, um, you know, actively giving because it is good for you. Whether or not you're a Bible-believing Christian, I believe that giving is good for you. It's something you should be doing in order to be your best self, especially being your best self financially. 
But here, where we have a lot of money, we have a lot of money left over from our income, we're building up assets, this is where you can start doing some big things and start really changing people's lives financially. And I think that's absolutely huge. I think that's something that we need to be doing, right? Uh, people always gripe about, oh, you know, the, the rich aren't doing anything for the poor. Well, then go be the rich and actually help people out. Then go be the rich and actually do something. And we can, right? And I plan to, and I know that you plan to as well. Help people as much as you can and do it in grandiose ways if uh, that's what you're called to do, right? But give extremely generously, have an open hand, uh, and it will work out well for you because at this point you've been investing a lot. You've been doing a lot of things that are going to help you build wealth over a long period of time. So having an open hand towards somebody else uh, can be very valuable and really help you to uh, have a proper view of money and maintain your financial balance where you are giving saving or investing uh, and spending in proper amounts over time and not just doing all of one or all of the others, right? So that is the financial action plan. Like I said, I didn't cover uh, all the little minutia to every single step, to every single part, but uh, there's just a lot there to unpack, right? But you get the picture. You get the picture of what you should do. Now the question really comes, are you going to do it? Are you motivated to do it? Are you motivated to change your financial life? Do you want something that works, right? Or do you want to just find something that's easy? Because I'll tell you, especially the first half of this plan is not easy. It's not easy to get your financial foundation set. That's what I call the first half of this plan, right? When we're budgeting and we're uh, saving up emergency funds and we're getting out of debt, right? We are laying our financial foundation. And it's difficult to lay a financial foundation. But once the foundation, think, think about a house, right? You don't see just a bunch of foundations uh, when you're going around looking at houses being built, right? The foundations, once they are laid, they start building that thing upward, right? They start getting uh, all the wood together. They start framing out the house. They start building the house in the way it's actually going to be, right? And you can't build your financial house. You can't invest heavily. You can't pay your mortgage off. You can't uh, max out uh, your investments. You can't give generously if you don't have your financial foundation set and you don't already have some money to your name, okay? So, we want to get that foundation set. We want to get you to a point where you are financially free. That's why I talk about financial freedom on the show all the time, right? Because financial freedom means having options. It means having the money to do the things that you want to do over the long term. And I believe that this type of plan can help you to get there. It can help you to get to a point where you do have money, where you do have the ability to save and invest over a long period of time. I believe in you. I believe that you can do that, uh, but you just have to uh, be all in, right? You have to be all in. You have to choose uh, to sacrifice. You have to choose to change your own life because it's very easy to start and then quit or start and quit time and time and time again, right? But if you can stick to this and you can be diligent in remaining on these steps over a long period of time, then you will be financially successful and you will reach some semblance of wealth building and some semblance of uh, long-term financial freedom. I can't control the amount of tragedy you have in your life. I can't control the amount of setbacks you have within this plan. But if you stick with it over a long period of time, it will be extremely valuable valuable to help you maximize your financial life, I promise. So thanks for watching this video. If you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcasts, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan, and that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. And then if you need somebody to help you to build a financial plan and keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, then I can do that. Just DM me on any of the major social media sites and tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions and you and I can begin working together, pushing towards your long-term financial goals and ultimately pushing you on towards long-term financial freedom, uh, which is what I hope for every single individual who's watching or listening to the show on a day-to-day -day basis. So thanks for tuning into this episode of Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. God bless.